presentation. Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority, please, if you would state your name at the beginning. Oops. Thank you. Dear Chair Scott, and oh, my name is Dear Chair Scott and mem honorable members of the Standing Committee. Thanks for the opportunity to make a delegation today. My name is Chandra Sharma. I'm the CAO of Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority. Joining me online are two of my colleagues, both professional planners with extensive municipal and conservation authority experience. NPCA's Director of Development and Planning, Ms. Lilani Lee Yates, and Senior Manager of Environmental Planning and Policy, David Deleuze. I'm a professional planner with 24 years of public service. During this time, I had an opportunity to work with all kinds of elected officials from all different parties. I've also worked with some of the leading industry and business partners located in Toronto, Mississauga, and Brampton, along the GTA rivers and wetlands. There's one thing in common. All had a strong sustainability mandate. All wanted to attract the best talent and skill immigrant. All financially contributed to enhancing the wetlands and river courses, daylighting water courses in industrial headwater areas in the GTA so their employees can benefit from these natural assets. Last week, I attended the Niagara Economic Summit to listen to our local industrial and business partners and academic institutions, Brock University and Niagara College. We all have common interest in providing the best quality of life and affordable housing to keep the best talent in Niagara. Conservation authorities have always been part of the solution to diver, deliver on provincial priorities. For instance, when the Walkerton incident happened, conservation authorities were given a major responsibility to urgently mobilize the science on a watershed basis and act as provincial source protection authorities. Because we had years of data and technical expertise, we carried out that mandate effectively to support municipalities under the Clean, Clean Water Act. There is history and trust in the ability of conservation authorities. We can do this again with less disruption. A written submission was provided to you with detailed comments. I have many copies of well-evaluated data on wetlands right here with me that I'm happy to provide to the committee members. It was also uploaded uh, for circulation to this committee. I'm going to be highlighting some of the major issues uh, with Bill 23 and also highlight uh, some additional uh, uh, proposals on ERO that directly impact Bill 23. For number one, proposed exemptions to transfer CA regulatory responsibility. Transfer of CA regulatory responsibility will be precedent setting and a risk to public health and safety, especially associated with uncertainty related to extreme weather events. Um, conservation authorities consider upstream, downstream, and cumulative impact on watershed basis rather than on a municipal boundary. There is greater chance of inconsistent and potentially risky decision making in numerous parties involved in those decisions on hazards. We recommend that CA's core mandate responsibility for delivery of natural hazard management through plan review be maintained. A better solution will be to set up a task force to accelerate and incentivize attainable housing, uh, mandating all regulatory agencies to work together. Progress on this should be reviewed on an annual basis to make needed adjustments as, as required. Our second proposal is related to changes prohibiting conservation authorities from having MOUs and agreements with municipalities. The inability of a conservation authority to enter into MOU with municipality may result in longer delays as many municipalities may not have the technical readiness. I say technical readiness that is required for this initiative. It may also result in increased cost to municipalities. We recommend, we recommend that municipalities should retain the option to enter into MOUs with CAs for plan review services with clearly defined items, timelines, performance measures as allowed under Section 21 of the CA Act already. My third issue is removal of pollution and conservation of land as a test from the regulation. These tests are fundamental to the protection of regulated areas, and they are an important first line of defense in pollution prevention during development. The removal of pollution test has implication also on our role as implementation agencies for federal provincial agreements on Great Lakes water quality and Canada-Ontario agreement, so important to this region. 
we recommend to reinstate these terms under the regulation. Finally, my, my final um, suggestion is about ERO posting related to the proposed changes to Ontario wetland evaluation system. The wetland evaluation system is a science-based system to assess the functions and values of wetlands in Ontario. Conservation authorities rely on this proving scientific methodology as an aid in implementing regulations under the Conservation Authorities Act. We recommend that instead of eliminating the wetland complexing and scoring criteria, work with conservation experts such as CAs to amend the criteria for complexing and scoring using a scientific approach. We also recommend that conservation authorities be identified as the decision maker to ensure a consistent standard for wetland evaluation and mapping um, to, to be maintained. In closing, we support the province's goal of increasing the housing supply and see our, ourselves as valuable partners in achieving this goal. However, the proposed changes affecting the conservation authorities and our mandate, our core mandate, may not have the desired effects. The diminished role of conservation authority could also lead to more development being located in natural hazards, higher seconds. cost in property damage, increased burden on municipal partners, and absolute erosion of an ecosystem approach applied through the established integrated watershed management system in Ontario. Let's grow and prosper together with nature while mitigating the safety risk from extreme weather and climate change. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much for your presentation. You got it under the wire. Okay. I'm